Since May 19, cryptocurrencies have come out of a wave of shocks, with Bitcoin showing an overall volatile downtrend since June. Today, the cryptocurrency market is in the red again, with data from global coin price site CoinGenco showing that Bitcoin once fell to near 31000 per coin. Ethereum once fell 10% to near 2300 per coin. Following the Chinese Communist Party's titling of regulation on Bitcoin, the IRS asked for authorization from Capitol Hill to regulate cryptocurrencies. IRS Commissioner Charles Reddick told a Senate Finance Committee hearing that tax agencies have a difficulty collecting information on cryptocurrency transfers under the current regulations and that the Congress should grant tax agencies more authority to regulate cryptocurrencies. He pointed out that there are currently about 8,600 cryptocurrency exchanges around the world, and most cryptocurrencies were designed to circumvent government regulations in the first place. Chinese Communist Party regulators announced that on May 18, financial institutions and payment companies are banned from providing services related to virtual currency transactions, marking a new suppress on digital currencies by the authorities. The Internet Financial Association of China, the China Banking Association, and the China Payment Clearing Association jointly issued a statement released to the public by the People's Bank of China, instructing its members, including banks and online payment companies, not to provide services related to virtual currencies, such as the currency exchange, registration, trading, clearing, and settlement to their customers. In addition, relevant institutions are prohibited from providing virtual currency storage, custody, and collateral services and issuing financial products related to virtual currencies. Information services, insurance, and derivative trading related to virtual currencies are also prohibited. Major companies are also being urged to step up their monitoring of the flow of funds involved in virtual currency transactions. Reuters said that many of the new rules announced this time is an expansion of the previous restrictions on virtual currencies and make it no longer possible for financial and payment companies to conduct such transactions. Earlier on April 27, the Beijing Municipal Bureau of Economy and Informatization issued an emergency notice requiring the city's data center to report cryptocurrency mining and related data within a specific period of time. The notice also required the reporting of electricity consumption and total energy consumption ratio for the past year. However, when a media inquiry was made to the Bureau about the result, it received no response. Previously, Inner Mongolia had announced a ban on cryptocurrency mining and the closure of all mining projects. The Bureau did not explain why the operation was so urgent, saying only that the mining situation was being sorted out as part of the normal business of the department. Despite a ban on the trading in cryptocurrencies, China still has the greatest number of miners in the Bitcoin mining industry. According to a paper published by several Chinese academies in Nature Communication on April 6, Chinese miners account for more than 75% of the computing power of the Bitcoin network. According to a study cited by Deutsche Well, China accounts for 70% of the total energy consumption spent on Bitcoin mining based on the amount of the electricity consumed during the mining process. This new prohibition makes it more challenging for individuals to purchase cryptos using various payment channels and could affect miners' business by making it more difficult for them to convert virtual currencies into yuan. Banks and payment companies also face challenges in identifying the flow of funds associated with virtual currencies. Bitcoin fell below the 40,000 barrier for the first time in three months on Wednesday after the Chinese Communist Party announced further restrictions on the virtual currency. Cryptocurrencies collapsed across the board on May 19, with Bitcoin now crashing and plummeting to 25%, nearing the 30,000 per coin mark 
and overshooting by 12,000 for the day. On the same day, the price of Dogecoin, which was recently shouted by Elon Musk, also plunged, losing 0.4 per coin and expanding to 20% intraday. After Bitcoin set an all-time high of $64,838 on April 14th, it has been going down. On May 19th, Bitcoin fell below the 40000 per coin mark and it's still going down. As of 9 p.m. on May 19th, Bitcoin's decline extended to 25%, falling below the 32000 per coin mark. The collapse of Bitcoin is due to a number of factors. On May 12, Elon Musk announced that Tesla would stop accepting the virtual currency's Bitcoin as payment for cars. Once the news came out, Bitcoin and Tesla stock price dropped considerably. Musk said that the sudden announcement of this shift was due to the fact that Bitcoin, whether it is the mining or trading process, contributes to the consumption of fossil fuels and causes excessive carbon emissions. And out of this concern, he decided to cancel the purchase of cards with Bitcoin. Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrencies to emerge, and it's also currently the most visible cryptocurrency in the world. Tesla only previously spent $1.5 billion in February to acquire Bitcoin in the name of the business, while revealing plans to accept the currency as a payment method. Mining bitcoins must be done by relying on high-powered computers, and the amount of energy needed to mine will escalate and therefore require more energy consumption over time. Currently, it often relies on electricity generated from fossil fuels to do so, particularly coal. A 2019 review by the International Energy Agency estimated that mining consumes between 20 and 80 percent terawatt hours of energy per year. This figure has risen in recent months. Most of the mining takes place in China. One of the aims of the CCP's news restrictions on virtual currencies is to seize the right to speak about digital technology. At the National People's Congress of the CCP in March, the CCP explicitly proposed to build a new advantage in the digital economy and actively participate in the formulation of international rules and digital technology standards for data security, digital currency, digital taxation, and etc. The CCP hopes that the digital economy, including blockchain, will contribute to China's GDP and turn CCP into a global leader. Blockchain technology is a technology that originates from the Bitcoin transaction mechanism to manage and protect data through encryption and decentralization. Currently, blockchain technology is mainly used in cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin. Xi Jinping, the General Secretary of the Communist Party of China, is a strong advocate of blockchain technologies to take control of the future of the global digital technology. The decentralized concept of blockchain technology, such as cryptocurrencies, runs right up against the totalitarian and authoritarian nature of the CCP. So the CCP will definitely tighten regulations on cryptocurrencies. Secondly, fearing the outflow of huge sums of money, the CCP authorities have been making moves recently to strictly scrutinize several major commercial banks and online financial platforms owned by tech giants such as Alibaba and Tencent in addition to making it clear that the authorities concerned are going to exercise stricter supervision and crack down on related financial crimes in regards to money laundering and transferring huge sums of money overseas through cryptocurrencies. CITIC Bank, a large Chinese state-owned joint stock bank, issued an announcement on April 22nd stating that any of the bank's accounts used for transactions such as Bitcoin and Litcoin would be cancelled to prevent money laundering risks. 
This comes after the Communist Party central bank issued its first fine of the year of 28.9 million yuan to CITC Bank for the ineffective anti-money laundering, along with the 14 principles, mainly for cryptocurrency-related money laundering. As of April 12, the Communist Party Central Bank has fined financial institutions and principals a total of 178 million yuan this year, the vast majority of which related to money laundering and cross-border transfers through cryptocurrencies. China accumulated a whopping 628 million yuan in anti-money laundering funds throughout last year. Chinese media have repeatedly reported before that cryptocurrencies are being used by individuals and companies to transfer a huge amount of assets overseas and as money laundering tools, and that this method is difficult to track and regulate. Cryptocurrencies are also listed as one of the illegal fundraising methods to be prevented and disposed of in the regulations on the prevention and disposal of illegal fundraising which became effective on May 1st. According to blockchain security firm Paxial's 2020 annual digital currency and time money laundering report, the value of unregulated cross-border liquid virtual currency in China reaches 17.5 billion in 2020, up 51% from 11.4 billion in 2019, and it's still growing rapidly. Due to the secretive and hard-to-trace nature of the cryptocurrencies, it may be difficult to judge the comprehensiveness of these data from the outflow side of the fund alone. The Chinese Communist authorities have also taken various measures to combat and prevent the use of cryptocurrencies for money laundering and outward transfers of funds, in addition to strengthening the supervision of banks and other financial institutions a nationwide crackdown called Card Break was launched in October last year. The cards, including bank cards and third party payments such as WeChat and Alipay, as well as cell phone cards and phone cards of virtual operators. Per Chinese media reports, the transfer of assets from China to foreign countries through virtual currencies and the laundering of illicit funds through virtual currencies are increasing rather than decreasing as authorities embark on the card-cutting campaign. According to Pax Shield's calculation of financial flows, the number of Bitcoin flowing abroad from China's domestic virtual currency exchange ranged from 89,400 to 166,900 per month from January to October 2020 after the operation was launched. The number of Bitcoin flowing abroad increased to 231,700. The number of Bitcoin flowing abroad increased to 231,700 and 254,100 respectively, up nearly 40% from the previous high. If we calculate on the basis of a single Bitcoin price of 50,000, the amount of money flowing overseas in the form of Bitcoin from China alone in November and December of last year was 10.58 billion and 12.7 billion, respectively. These are a huge amount of money involved, and it is a trend that continues to rise. Many Chinese people, especially the Chinese Communist Party's powerful elites, feel that their money is not safe in China and use various means to transfer their assets abroad, cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin being one of the key means. These people buy cryptocurrencies not for investment, but wealth hedging. The world is now trying to suppress virtual currencies in the United States, United Kingdom, Switzerland, and China. Several other countries are afraid that virtual currencies will challenge their status as credit currencies, while the Chinese Communist Party is afraid that domestic money will run out. In Hong Kong and Asia, much of the money used for production or loans has gone into cryptocurrencies, which is devastating to the CCP's financial system. A large amount of Chinese wealth goes into virtual currencies, which the CCP cannot find or get back, and it is the safest for the holders.
This is in addition to the Chinese Communist Party's attempt to replace the U.S. dollar with the yuan and take control of the global financial system. Some recent statements by Li Bo, deputy governor of the CCP's central bank, seems to bear this out. In his speech at the Bo Ao Forum for Asia on April 18th, Li Bo clearly defined crypto slash virtual currencies as not a legal tender but crypto assets and an alternative investment. And the central bank is studying the rules for regulating cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and stablecoin. In the future, any stablecoin that wishes to become a widely used payment instrument is subject to strict regulations, just like a bank or quasi-banking financial institution is subject to strict regulations," Li Bo said. Liang Xingjun, an expert in Chinese virtual and digital currencies and co-founder of Fulsen Group, said in an April 30th speech. That achieving seamless exchange of sovereign digital currencies and community digital currencies in more countries, and thus global payment circulation, is a financial response to the one ball, two system solution. Liang's one ball, two system is a communist term for the coexistence of the communist totalitarian system represented by the CCP and the Western democratic system represented by the United States. The CCP first launched the RMB internationalization system, and last year began a major push to digitize the RMB. It is hoped that the RMB will be internationalized to challenge the status of the U.S. dollars. With the RMB's share of only about two percent of settlement in the international payment system, it will not be able to challenge the U.S. dollar's position as the main currency of the international payment system in the short term. PayPal founder Peter Thiel argued that the Chinese Communist Party's use of virtual currencies should be taken seriously, speaking at the U.S. think tank Richard Nixon Foundation's Technology and National Security Network conference on April 6. He said, "Should Bitcoin be seen as a financial weapon of the Chinese against the United States? It threatens the legal tender, especially the U.S. dollar." In addition, Republican Congressman Ted Budd said that the Chinese Communist Party is restricting cryptocurrencies in order to serve their authoritarian, communist agenda. In response to the Communist Party's policy to restrict cryptocurrencies on Wednesday, the U.S. has more reasons to be a leader in cryptocurrencies. U.S. Senator Cynthia Lummis tweeted Wednesday that China has launched the digital yuan in select cities, and they want to eventually use it to undermine the dollar in the financial world. This is a national security issue, and if U.S. does not respond, we will be left behind. She added. Lummis has proposed an amendment to add blockchain to the Endless Frontier Act. The bill is a bipartisan effort to allocate approximately 110 billion for basic and advanced technology research in the United States in response to the growing competitiveness of the CCP. In a previous statement, Lummis added, "This amendment would put our blockchain and financial innovation research and development efforts into high gear, which is desperately needed."